it's October 30th, 2012, and been still experiencing some roller coaster ups and downs from <clears throat> not only being on benzodiazepines for so long, but also from uh, restarting the withdrawal process. I made it all the way down to seven milligrams of diazepam per day. But uh, I was following this schedule where um, once you got down to ten milligrams, the only dose you took was um, in the evening. And I was also tapering down every nine days when you um, when the schedule said you could take two or more weeks um, if you need to. But uh, my so I made it down to seven, and then my doctor eventually um, bumped me all, all the way back up to twenty. And I a week ago, last Tuesday, I bumped down two milligrams. To, and just one dilemma though is that my doctor called off last week. He was just off in general. Maybe it was Alan Ward. And so, since he was off last week, um, I was an idiot and I wasn't paying attention to how many two milligram tablets I had. Because I had like this bottle. Oh, which by the way, the only reason I have quantity 60 is because. When I had made it, when I was tapering down the first time, I, um, it just happened to be that to finish my taper, if I kept, um, tapering down every nine days, I, all I needed was exactly 62 milligram tablets, so it just turned out to be an even number like that. Um, it did. I had to have my, I had a really bad withdrawal reaction, so my dosage got bumped back up, and here I am giving it another go. Just, my doctor's trying to be more involved this time. He, like, every time I taper down, he wants me, or before I taper down, he wants to, me to come in for a visit and to give me the okay, which I think is kind of funny because he's proved up to this point that, um, he has no idea what he's doing with a uh, benzodiazepine. Um, but uh, some things that uh, I've been doing since I'm on this medication in the first place, um, I'm still on a high enough dose that, and it's gonna take six months or longer until I'm completely off of it for. Um, most of my normal brain <coughs> function to come back. Uh, so I'm pretty much like a in slow down mode, exactly what drugs were supposed to do, and kind of like a zombie sometimes when I when everyone else around me is you know way more active. For example, it sucks when I go to to like try and play basketball open gym and I was, some of the times when I was able to play at least a couple games um, I'd be struggling to make it up and down the court and then there'd be like obese people or like people that weren't basketball players at all who were completely out of shape they were <laughs> had more endurance than I did it's just embarrassing uh, of, uh, I've been getting a lot of uh, biology, science movies um, from the library lately. This one is crazy long. It's a uh, see if it'll pop. Let's see if it shows up on here. 
586 minutes. It's another one about ocean. I think this one is about I think this just talks about life in general, earth and life. And then uh, they'd come out with a uh, a new Starship Troopers movie uh, called the Starship Troopers Invasion. And the, since it was a newer movie, and the preview looked re really uh, um, high def and computer animation looked awesome, I decided. I've only seen the first Starship Troopers, and then there's this one, and then a third one before they came out with Invasion. So I decided to, just for the heck of it, even though number two and number three are like average rated movies, I, I just, for the heck of it, just got that and got the third one waiting for me. If it gets too boring, though, I won't even watch all of it, because I. Here's why, um, this is basically what I'd be trying to get involved in with my life if I wasn't held back from side effects of my medication and the fact that you have to withdraw slowly or else you can end up going into a life-threatening seizure or brain bleed or a coma, or you could just... Even just tapering too fast, you can have psychotic reactions like I've had. But um, other than the medication and thousand and fifty dollar federal student loan I had to pay back before I can go to college, um, this is called uh, this is an ebook version uh, called Ending Aging by Aubrey de Grey. Let's see what page I'm on, 49. I'll show you the cover. It's a really um, interesting book. I'm only on you know, page 49 of 366. And Aubrey de Grey is a gerontologist. Uh, he's actually a. Uh, on top of gerontology, there's biogerontology, and then that um, is recently breaking into its own branch called biomedical gerontology. Unfortunately, uh, since it's been so recent, there it's really hard to. It's easy to find courses on biogerontology, but biomedical gerontology is um, the actual solutions to not necessarily ending aging, but at least expanding the human lifespan you know, and looking into decay, decay of our body and ways to prevent it a lot more than we do now. So that's mainly what he is, is a biomedical gerontologist among many other things. But since it is a subdivision of biogerontology, which is the physical study of aging, it's not exactly the, you know, it's not focused like biomedical on, you know, counteracting these problems, just the study of it. Um, a lot of his critics are, are biogerontologists themselves. Um, he's just a very proactive guy. And, I mean, his ultimate goal is ending, like, <clears throat> aging on a, just a, the, you know, the, I guess you would call a physical level. You know, he knows, he understands that 
that's the first step and that we it's basically about the stopping decay in our body that makes us grow old or at least slowing it down tremendously to I mean, he would love to give people a thousand or more years instead of you know <clears throat> 76 years so if I ever get off the star medication and I start feeling better and I can get a hold of some money to pay off a federal loan and then I also have over 20,000 well my bad it's around $16,000 now that's in old student loans that are tied and co-signed to my mom and my stepdad so got around seventeen thousand dollars I gotta take care of and I'm you know getting older myself I'm I'm learning about how we you know break down and we can't do, do as much as we could you know when we we're between like 20 and 24 years old so uh, kind of like learning about this stuff kind of kills your self-esteem because no matter how much um, willpower you have, how much positive thing you, you have, science says that you're going to break down more and more. And, you know, 27 is still young, but, you know, I mean, I know plenty of people that are pretty active, you know, in their 30s, but I have to understand that I can't, if I go back to uh, any type of physical labor, I'm not going to be able to work anywhere near the same pace that I used to be able to. Um, which I think is kind of a sham, like, now that I'm older and, like, learning about this, um, it's just obvious that corporations and companies know about this, they, they know that, like, the younger people, um, have, you know, just bundles of, of energy and can work all day and they're really, um, they're smarter and they're, they're quick learners, but yet, they trick every, you know, even though they're smarter when it comes to being on the job, they're not, not everyone is smart financially, so, for example, a lot of young people get, you know, fast food or retail jobs, and then companies, you know, tell them, oh, you're, you're only this age, so we're only going to pay you minimum wage, and then, you know, if you're lucky, you'll get a 10 cent raise every year, <laughs> so, um, this sucks <laughs> Looking back and knowing that in my younger years uh, I was, you know, well more qualified to be making, you know, twenty dollars or more an hour, when now it's going to be very challenging to ever find a job that pays that much again, unless I, you know, find one that starts at like eleven or twelve and then stay there and. And then it'd be like a really challenging job that has high pay raises like every six months, but uh, it's just hard, overall hard work. Like my brother in law, Johnny Warner, he works for TS Tech, a company that builds uh, seats from ground up of a few different Honda vehicles. And he I think he started started out at like nine seventy five or somewhere around there an hour and now he's up to over sixteen dollars an hour and he just had an interview the other day for a supervisor position I guess with a decent pay jump so uh, he's only been there for years, so, he, uh, yep, he got a, a nice pay increase for just being there for years, but it's a, you know, warehouse job where you're dealing with, uh, steel, metal, heavy parts, and you get, you're required to work at a fast pace, so, it's like freaking bodybuilding all day long depending on 
I mean the majority of the assembly line um, stations are you picking up, lifting metal, handling it. So, but anyways, something biomedical gerontology and extending the human lifespan is something I'm interested in. And hopefully one day I can figure out a way to be involved in it.